I'm Mike Fairborn. 25 years ago, my TV weather forecast looked like this. I used to make all my calculations with one of these. Now, my information comes from satellites and worldwide computer systems. And the maps are Doppler radar images. Of course, all this new technology is the result of a great deal of scientific research. In the very same way, research has led to great improvements in the construction and maintenance of our local roads and streets. An important source of that research is the Minnesota Local Road Research Board, the LRRB. Engineers in Minnesota, in fact engineers around the world, use the results of LRRB research every day. I'd like to explain the LRRB's history and organization and then show you how much Minnesotans benefit from LRRB research. I'll be brief in covering the history and organization. If you want more details, they're in this brochure. The LRRB, which was established by Minnesota state law in 1959, has 10 members. They're appointed by the state transportation commissioner, and of the 10, four are county engineers and two are city engineers. The other members are from MnDOT and the University of Minnesota. The law says the LRRB may fund research on any aspect or part of a roadway, including pavement, bridges, drainage systems, roadside plantings, and environment and safety issues. The law also says funds can be used to reconstruct or replace any part of a roadway that has been used for LRRB research and has failed. Finally, the law allows LRRB funds to be used to implement and monitor research results. LRRB funding levels are recommended by two screening boards that are separate from the LRRB. One of these screening boards is composed of county engineers, each representing the counties in a MnDOT district. The other screening board is composed of city engineers, each representing the cities in a MnDOT district. The screening boards are allowed to set aside up to one half of one percent of county and city state aid funds for LRRB research. In 1995, the LRRB budget was $1.7 million. The LRRB research process is straightforward. Local engineers submit ideas to the LRRB. The LRRB selects and approves proposals. MnDOT provides administrative support and technical assistance. The projects themselves are conducted by researchers from MnDOT, universities, and consulting firms. The LRRB monitors progress and then implements the results. Since its beginning, the LRRB has sponsored more than 150 individual projects. While those projects have covered many, many different topics, most of them fall into four main categories materials and methods used in constructing and maintaining pavement, drainage systems and other utilities under the pavement, managing the roadside environment, and bridge construction and maintenance. The greatest number of projects has been done to improve pavement construction and maintenance. Here's one important example. In the 1960s, the LRRB began funding statewide testing with a device called the Binkelman Beam. Researchers measured how far a pavement was bent downward or deflected when a vehicle passed over it. They used that information to derive a very important factor, pavement strength. This research adapted methods that had been developed at the national level to Minnesota's pavement types and climates. The results benefited our cities and counties very directly. Engineers used the data on the strengths of their pavements as a guide to set realistic spring load limits, estimate pavement life expectancy, and determine future pavement maintenance requirements. The Binkelman beam was a predecessor of more accurate, cost-effective devices like this one, called the Falling Weight Deflectometer, or FWD. While the beam gave an overall reading of pavement strength, the FWD provides separate data on the strengths of the pavement and the layers of soil underneath the pavement. Sensors detect pavement deflection in response to a non-destructive impact to the pavement from a falling weight. Deflection data is stored in a computer. This is the current generation of pavement testing, a sophisticated outdoor laboratory located in central Minnesota. It's called the Minnesota Road Research Project, or MinRoad for short, with funding from LRRB, MnDOT, and several federal agencies, MinRoad began operations in 1994. Among other elements, MinRoad includes a two and a half mile loop of roadway constructed to test low volume pavement designs. A truck of known weight goes around the loop while thousands of sensors embedded in the pavement and subgrade record deflection, strain, and compression during all seasons and weather conditions. With the results, researchers are developing ways to set more accurate spring load limits and are designing roads that will last longer and cost less. 
Now here's a very different kind of research in pavement methods and materials. In the mid-1970s, researchers with LRRB funding developed the very first economical method for recycling asphalt from old pavements into new pavements. They came up with a way to reuse materials that reduces landfilling and requires only conventional equipment. Their pioneering methods and techniques are in use not only all over Minnesota, but worldwide. That project is a good example of a trend in the LRRB's funding decisions. Since the mid-1960s, there have been more and more projects dealing with environmental issues. Another important topic in the environmental category is dust control on gravel roads. In one study, researchers examined the methods and materials used by a large number of agencies and helped those agencies improve their dust control programs. The result was that agencies with established dust control programs reduced their blading costs on gravel roads by an average of 50% and saved an average of 25 to 50% on the cost of regraveling. A third major area of LRRB funded research focuses on water mains, drainage tiles, and other elements beneath the pavement. For example, three studies have been done on methods used to backfill utility trenches. Every year, miles of trenches are dug in Minnesota by utility companies, government agencies, and contractors. But before the LRRB studies, no reliable information was available on how a trench is likely to settle after it's backfilled. That meant there was almost always a dangerous bump or depression at the top of a filled-in trench. And based on survey data, researchers estimated that utility patches were reducing pavement life by 8 to 10 years. Public agencies were usually stuck with the bill when it was necessary to repair improper backfills. By observing existing backfilled trenches and comparing a variety of methods, researchers showed that the most critical factor in trench backfilling is compaction. The studies showed how much settlement could be expected in a given type of soil with a given compaction method. The most direct benefit from these studies has been a set of specific guidelines for trench dimensions and compaction methods that have been shown to avoid problems and save money. With LRRB support, this booklet has been distributed to utility companies, contractors, and public agencies throughout Minnesota. The other major LRRB category is research on constructing and maintaining bridges. One focus is on how de-icing salts affect the reinforcing bars called rebars inside concrete bridges. Corrosion of rebars is a major factor in bridge deterioration. In an eight-year study, researchers evaluated a variety of methods in use around the state to reduce rebar corrosion. The researchers identified the best methods and materials and distributed their findings. Now, local engineers can base their bridge maintenance decisions on solid evidence rather than guesswork. The LRRB also funded research on timber bridges. In one recent study, researchers found that constructing a layer of timber on top of an existing bridge deck increased the stiffness of the bridge by 35%. They also showed that layered construction saves money because thinner, less expensive timbers can be used. These research findings and specifications that can be used for existing and new bridges are now available to every local agency in Minnesota. In addition to funding research, the LRRB makes sure that the results of its research get out to the people who need them. A special LRRB subcommittee is responsible for publishing research reports and field guides including these that I've shown you. But information is also disseminated in many other ways, including seminars, videos, and other technical assistance. Local governments receive this help through the technology transfer efforts of MnDOT and the University of Minnesota's Center for Transportation Studies. In the last few years, thousands of agency staff members have been helped. The LRRB also produces videos for both technical and non-technical audiences. Here's one that incorporates information from the pavement strength testing studies I referred to earlier. Engineers use this to show officials and the public how pavements are constructed and how spring load limits are set. As you can see, the LRRB is a research clearinghouse. It gathers ideas from the people who know what's needed, monitors the research as it's being done, and then distributes the results. I hope you're concluding that the LRRB has a lot to offer, and especially if you're an engineer. I hope you conclude that your involvement in the LRRB would be valuable to you and the citizens of your city, township, or county. You probably can use some of the results of LRRB research. You also probably have ideas for new research topics. You might consider volunteering a research site or serving on a LRRB research panel or even serving on the LRRB itself. 
To start the ball rolling in any of these directions, call the MnDOT Office of Research Administration. Their address and phone numbers are in this brochure. The best reason to get involved in the LRRB is that every Minnesota taxpayer will benefit directly in the form of longer lasting, safer, more cost effective, and more environmentally compatible roadways. Thank you.